Okay, so so far this morning we've been using bone chisels and oak wedges to split smaller branches and what we're going to do now to work together is try and split this larger log through the pith again same materials trying to use prehistoric techniques and how people might have done it in the past using bone chisels oak wedges and wooden mallets so Dave you were saying so it's trying to avoid the knots. Yeah.
I'd be very happy if that was in the workshop. Boat chisel, oak wedges, split lock. Yeah. And yesterday we had an experimental archaeology day focusing on woodworking and splitting locks. Initially what we were trying to decipher is how we we would be able to split logs using prehistoric tools and techniques and see if we can decipher anything that would link to our site. To split a log today, we would use a modern axe and on a log like this, we try and find the pith down in the centre. We would, with a mallet, we would take the weakest line and try and avoid any knots on the sides make sure it's nice and clear, go through the pith, line it up, start to begin a bit of a notch and then add oak wedges, hammer those in until the wood splits. Of course back in the Neolithic they weren't using steel axes so we're trying to think what would substitute for that and what we've done is we've made some very simple bone chisels which are just a smashed up bit of cow bone um, initially chipped to make a bit of a point but then finally polished on a bit of sandstone to make a nice edge and what we've done is exactly that technique of rather than using the axe we've used bits of bone with a wooden mallet hammer through an initial notch and line followed with oak wedges hammered those in and that has caused a break through logs of varying sizes we began with branches to sort of practice the technique which was quite difficult and required wedges in the sides to try and help it split all the way down and sometimes you'd have to re-chip in with the bone chisel to sort of guide the notch and the split. Um, but then we moved on to some larger material um, such as this sycamore of varying lengths, initially splitting one this size and then repeatedly splitting numerous times to essentially try and form some sort of plank material like our suspected plank timber down in the platform in Trench 10. Along with splitting, we were lucky enough to have Dave Robson down for the day who supplied us with the wood, the local wood carver, and he has an interest in prehistoric wood carving techniques, so he made a flint axe which we were able to try out and use to help us flatten off one of these planks, which was very effective. Obviously not as clean cutting as a modern steel axe, it's tended to tear out the wood more, um, but then we could smooth that off with a ground down bone chisel. Um, we had students and community volunteers as part of this, all partaking in, in, in the day, able to have a go with themselves and split and take their observations on board and really get everyone thinking about the past um, and I think that's the the real benefit of experimental archaeology is yes it's enjoyable and it gets people learning about how things may have done but it also just inadvertently makes you think and as a process of that we had people sort of starting to think about how it's best to hammer in your bone um, your bone wedges um, Tim, one of our volunteers, was sort of noting ha about hitting it very sort of flat on. If you're if going in at a bit of an angle, it doesn't bite as well, so it's going to take a lot more effort. Whereas if you li line it up and manage to hit it flat on the top, then you're going to have a much cleaner break. Um, also, from yesterday, we observed while using the axe and bone chisel, were tiny little flecks of wood, tiny little wood chips and shavings which are coming off. Some minute in size, others from the axe much more substantial and they have got to start to think about some of the organic material we're finding in the platform in trench 6 and 10 where we have very thin organics embedded into bits of wood and wrapped around them um, primarily minute in size but then we have also pieces this sort of length previously we've interpreted them as may have been, could they have been cereals, could they have been bits of leaf, but with pieces this long, could, they could be desiccated wood chips. We're not sure, it's something that we're going to look into a bit more, but it's, I think
think that helps demonstrate how experimental archaeology and testing things and trying these techniques using resources available to people in prehistory, it can give us options for interpretation about our site. Um, we can't say that this was how people would have split wood in the past. Um, we can only infer that it's a way that they might have done it. Um, so overall it was a very successful day. Everyone seemed to get a lot of enjoyment out of it and we're going to try and next week or the week after try and use um, our planks and pieces of wood that we split to try and make and replicate some of the artefacts that we've been finding in the trench such as the paddle from 2013.